I'm I'm honored and a little concerned that they had me come speak here tonight. Um, I'm concerned that they're having a food truck owner come. Um, I didn't know that that was looked at as really high honor to own a food truck. Um, we started the waffle wagon. Before that, I want, I want to talk about the background and where I've come from. Um, I, I'm from Layton, Utah. Um, that's where I was born and raised. My education is kind of a, it's kind of been a rough one. Um, I guess I was diagnosed with having ADD in second grade. Um, I didn't think of it as a learning disorder. I just like to go talk to my friends. Um, oftentimes on my report card was it was either out of his seat or not staying on task. Um, I just I just like my friends. I like communicating, and that's probably the best way that I could. Um, could get through school just the torture of sitting there listening to these teachers. Um, I graduated at, at Northridge High School um, and I, I then went on LDS mission and moved up to Logan. Um, I kind of dragged my, th three, my feet through that. I, uh, I uh, still have the good old ADD problems of sitting in class uh, trying to learn. I, I switched majors a few times. Um, accounting wasn't up for me, so naturally I went to communications. I like to talk to people, like to talk to my friends ever since second grade. Um, I think a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs are problem solvers. Um, I think of myself as a problem solver. I, I swear all my day consists of is going around and fixing things, and it has been for a long time. Um, whether it's my junky cars that I have. Or, or something is just always having a problem and going and fixing it. It's like a natural thing for me. When my wife comes home and she has uh, some problem that she had at work or something she wants to talk to me about, my, my first thing is how can we solve it? And that's probably not the way to solve it. She probably just wants me to listen to her. Um, but I'm going to go through four problems that I've experienced and, and the solutions that we've had um, while in the business. Um, the first business that I owned was a, a pool guy's company. We, we, we wanted to, that's what the name was. It was simple enough because that's what people started calling us anyway was the pool guys here. So we just named it that. Um, me and one of my buddies, unfortunately he was going to BYU and I was up at Utah State at the time. And we'd moved, moved back home uh, for the summer and he said, hey, let's start a business. And I, I looked at him and I said, okay, uh, what are we going to do? And he said, well, we could wash windows. I said, yeah, that's, that's pretty simple. And then uh, he had the bright idea of thinking of we could become uh, some sort of pool experts and, and clean pools and charge people money just like other companies have done. Um, one of our main problems is we didn't have any clients. Uh, we'd met together and we, we went to everybody that we knew that had a pool. Um, we talked to them. We'd signed up a couple people. I remember standing on a doorstep with them, and he and one of our one of the people they asked us, "Hey, are my pipes going to freeze during the winter?" And I looked at him like, and I looked at my buddy. And I sure hope not. We didn't know what we were doing. Um, a lot of the time, we were looking on Google uh, or, or YouTube just how to figure out things. That's I'm, I'm being honest. We'd be out at a pool, and he'd be on his phone looking through, just trying to figure out how we could do it. Um, some things that would take us two hours or like a five minute fix, and we just learned learned that. That way um, but the number one problem we had was no clients we still didn't have an, after about a month or so and then pool season starts to uh, ramp up around March uh, people want to open it up for Memorial Day or I don't even know Labor Day or Memorial Day um, so what what we did is we got on Google Earth and you'd be amazed at what you can see in people's backyards uh, we we went directly to their doorstep and we knew we knew they had a pool um, their neighbors knew they had a pool, so we, if we were even close in the area, we knew we were going to get a pool. And we just started picking up clients right and left, and we still didn't know what we were doing. We kept learning and growing. Um, and that's part of what built my confidence in becoming uh, a business owner, is that we could, we could become successful, and I was confident in myself. Um, at that time, well, like I said, we didn't know anything, but we became experts, and I became very good at, at fixing pools and helping people with their pools. Um, uh, that, and that's one thing that, that uh, with the business um, is you got to become an expert in the field. Um, another another problem that we had, and this is a little bit about a background on my dad. It's his birthday today, so if you see him, tell him happy birthday. I'm sure he'll talk to you. He talks to everybody. He's got the same problem as me, the ADD. Um, one thing that he helped and he instilled in us as a kid is work, work ethic and sticking to, to something. 
Um, he uh, there's times when he, and he was a, he's a business owner himself. He's a dental technician for thirty something years, um, and he, uh, he I remember he would work 16, 18 hour days, and I knew that he had a a, 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 a sleeping bag at his work, and he'd roll it out, he'd fall asleep, wake up, and start working just to just to get by. Um, that's one thing that we learned. I learned from him was just the straight work ethic of of doing what it do, needed to do to provide for us um, as kids, us growing up, getting us shoes on our feet, clothes on our back, um, attending our games, coaching our games. Um, those are some of the things that, that he could do as a as a I guess an entrepreneur himself. Um, one of the problems with that though is his business is changing. Um, a lot of that. The dental technician is either being outsourced or it's being helped. Uh, they're being done by computers. So his his profession is a dying profession. There's not a lot of them out there, and they've gone to, to the computer age. We're outsourcing it to Vietnam or wherever. Um, with, with him trying to provide for us, he didn't. He wasn't able to put away a retirement. Um, this is a way that we figured we could give back with starting the waffle wagon. I remember my brother. Um, we were, we were down at his house, and I, and I can't take credit for for starting the waffle wagon. Um, it wasn't even my idea. Um, it was my brother's. He, he came to my my dad and said, hey, we're going to start a waffle wagon. And I looked at him like he was nuts. I, he doesn't know anything about the food industry, never has. I don't even know if he could make a corn dog in the microwave. Um, and my dad even said, he said, we don't know anything thing about waffles. We're not waffle people. And uh, I thought the same thing and until we went back the next week and there's a $2,500 waffle iron sitting in his in his kitchen. I thought, well, that's a pretty nice waffle iron you got there. <laughs> I don't see what, what you're going to do with it. Rather quite expensive for a waffle iron. But he was willing to take a jump. Um, and as an entrepreneur, I think you've got to be willing to take that jump, take the risk of going out on your own and doing it. Um, things the next the next day or the next couple of weeks, we had a trailer sitting out front of his house. I think this is this is nuts. This is he, he's serious about this. So we start and we build it into a kitchen. Um, and I remember our opening day; it had its own set of problems leading up to it. Um, I remember we we'd like worked in my dad's driveway just trying to figure out how to make waffles and uh, I remember our, our first open in our opening day we had a line down the street and uh, we with one iron we, we, we can make eight waffles at a time with one iron is the only one that could could work and and we had waffles piled I'm, I'm not kidding you it was piled that high of waffles we couldn't get off the irons they just kept breaking and, and flaking and doing we couldn't get them to go and uh, I figured that, that was a good problem to have that we actually had a line um, we were hoping to maybe just do it on the weekends, but ever since that, we haven't really stopped. Um, and that was um, that was one of the things. And I've talked about becoming an expert. I uh, I think that the passion is what drives someone to become an expert. Um, also. Um, you're only going to get expertise is from experience, and that's taking that jump, taking the risk, and actually setting out to do something. Um, my passion—I I don't. Do I really have a passion in waffles? Do I think they're the best food on earth? Sort of. I mean, I, I'll just be honest with you. I don't necessarily have a passion in waffles, but I do have a passion in helping my dad um, have s somewhat of a semi-retired job. Well, one thing I am passionate about is someone coming up and telling me and saying, "Hey, these are some of the best waffles I've ever had," um, and and I'm 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 very passionate about having a good product that we can get out and we can serve. Um, that's those are those are the passions that have helped me drive to me to become an expert in waffles. I am very good at making waffles. Probably, I'd say the best around, a lot better than my dad and brother. Um, one of the problems that we had. Um, that came later down the line was was getting our mix. Um, originally, we had it shipped in from Belgium. Um, it was cool to tell people, "Yeah, hey, our mix is shipped shipped directly from Belgium. These are authentically aged waffles." Um, that that kind of wore off pretty quick when he figured out that there was an import tax, um, and the price of our waffles per waffle was just was more than what we were serving them for. Um, so we had to make some changes. I remember. Sitting out in the truck, uh, this was another. I think we were at a crossroads there. It was we had to change or we got to shut down. Um, and I was out there just 
trying to come up with my own waffle mix and eventually I think we've got a waffle mix I think it's better than the one we got shipped in from Belgium um, part of that is taking a leaf, leap uh, I think that a lot of times I could go work a nine to five job. I believe that. I believe in myself to go do that. But I think, I don't think that's me. I don't think me sitting at a job is gonna help with my ADD or me being wanting to communicate. I think I could get up and I'd be going to talk to somebody else at a cubicle. The same problem will be happening that happened in, in uh, junior high, high school. Um, part of it was a belief in oneself. It, it started out simple. Um, my buddy believed in me that we could start a, a business um, uh, doing pools. I had nothing. I knew nothing about pools. Um, I believed in helping people. Um, that's what kind of drove that passion is with the pools. I didn't care about pools. I like swimming just as much as anybody else, but it wasn't a, about the pools. Um, and if and I, if I look back now. Um, we, we're going to have a whole set of different problems coming up in the future. By March, we hope to have seven truck, different food trucks up and running um, and a Fizz franchise um, store that's going in South Ogden. Um, there's a list of problems that from now until March that we have to overcome. Um, we're taking a leap. Um, I mean, this is, this is, these are some things that uh, weigh on my mind, but I think we can do them because we've done them before. Um, one of the quotes, and I don't think my dad quotes very many people because I don't think he can remember too many, is uh, Henry Ford, and he kept telling us when we were when we were starting. He said, "Whether you think you can or you or you can't, you're right." Um, and that that's mostly the message that I'd like to share to you today. Is like, I didn't think I had anything special to offer as an entrepreneur. Um, I don't even still really see myself as that. Just somebody that can take a risk or reallocate resources to help other people. Um, and I think that's what an op entrepreneur do does, is he's willing to take risks, he's willing to step out of the norm and, and change stuff for the better or, or make a better product. Um, I don't know if I have too much more to say. I, is there any questions that you guys have for food trucks? I know you guys are probably just wanting the waffles, which is good too, I'm happy with that. That makes me happy. Yeah. yeah I wanted to ask you, what, you, know, you talked about in the beginning Pavement, knocking doors. Uh, uh, you, know, you talked about your experience as a missionary. Was it was it hard for you to get out there and you know to find those clients? Because I think that's a big hurdle for a lot. Of people. Um, no, it wasn't. I, I actually like going door to door. I think that I think it's hilarious. It's fun for me. I I, I honestly enjoy that. Um, going door to door. I know it can be a hurdle for, for people just to approach people. Um, I definitely had that at the first as a missionary, but at that time, no. I mean, it became na is natural. Talking about a different product, yeah. I mean, it, I didn't know what I was talking about. I had to become an expert at that. So, so was it sort of rough going in the beginning? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, I, there there was questions they would ask me, and I I didn't know. I mean, there, there was projects that we took on that we had nothing we knew about. I mean, there was a, a pool over in Ogden, and uh, this lady said, "Hey, can you come clean out our pool?" And I said, "Yeah, we can take on anything," because I thought, "Yeah, we can get business," you know. And we walked in the backyard the next day. I think it was dark when we first contacted her, and a few mallard ducks flew out of it. And I thought, oh boy, what did we get ourselves into it? And the pool, I thought maybe it's eight feet deep. Um, we drained the pool and shoveled out um, just massive amounts of like algae, and it ended up being 20 feet deep. So there's some problems like that we didn't know, but we learned. So we had fun doing it. So, yeah. Um, so w when we first started out, we could do eight waffles every three minutes. So that's that's kind of how fast we can move them. So um, that just kind of depends on the vent. Sometimes we'll throw more waffles iron irons in there just to try to keep up with the demand. So, yeah. Um, our next step is we want to add another wagon. Um, we also want to diversify. We're going to come out with a soup and salad truck. Um, our fizz drinks, um, and then we hope to open up a Thai, a thai food truck. Um, so those are some of the, the things we want to. Eventually, I would like to see us 
make and produce franchise we can sell trucks to people in different places so that that would be my my next goal but as of right now we're, we want to get these trucks up and running so Um, I think there's enough people um, to serve, and honestly, I think we make a better waffle. Um, but I'm biased, so. But yeah, there's competition. I mean, you got to be aware of your competition. You're foolish if you're not. So. Yep. So what gave you the inspiration? ADD. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how was the financing in the beginning to get your first waffle truck? Um, yeah, the bank gave us a loan. I mean, it's 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 kind of a weird loan. I think it's under like a is it under like an RV or something, something like that. Yeah, it was an RV loan. Yeah. <laughs> With all your new trucks opening, are you wanting to stay in the Ogden area or um, you can drive them? So. Yeah, it'll be. We'll be more. We're actually going to be moving our commercial kitchen. So yeah, when you own a waffle truck or not a waffle truck, you own a food truck, you have to have a commercial kitchen. Hopefully that'll be moving to Salt Lake, but we still have trucks up here in Davis and Weber County. So yeah, they'll be coming up here for sure. Yep. So you mentioned that you have a commercial kitchen. I was just wondering if there's any other unique uh, regulations or things when you do start a food truck. Yeah, there, there's so many regulations. It's ridiculous. Some cities won't let you in. Riverdale City won't even let allow food trucks because they think you, they compete with their brick and mortars. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of hoops to jump through. More than I thought when we were taking it on. So yeah. Yep. Oh, I every day. Every day. <laughs> yep. Yeah, every day. I mean, it's there's always something. I, our very first day, I, I remember look. I had one of those oh shoot moments, and I don't think I use shoot, but I look over at my dad, and, and he's looking at me like, "Come on, make a waffle." And and I, there's a line, and I'm not kidding you. There's there's batter of, of just broken up waffles, and I'm like. Uh, what are we gonna do? Just shut the window, man. Let's get out of here. So yeah, yeah. Um, what were the forms of advertising that you used in um, the beginning, especially go, leading up to your opening day? Uh, no, what was really smart is, is uh, my sister-in-law Shaylee. She contacted uh, some bloggers, and we had a free like free waffles to bloggers. Uh, I don't know if they not. I don't think they necessarily like to be called mommy bloggers, but that was is what they were, and they got the word out. So our our grand opening was big due to that. And I think that was very key in that. Um, the number one form that we advertise is just through social media. So we've, we've done paid advertising through Facebook. But other than that, it's just Twitter, Instagram, and, and Facebook. So, yeah. So is there like a big Utah permit you can get, or you have to get like a permit for each county? You guys like um, each county health department, and then you have to get each individual city business license. So it's kind of a pain. And some cities, they like to even, if you have two spots in their city, you have to have two different business licenses, which is silly too. So it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, like, if you have two trucks, say one's in Cable, one's in Ogden, can you, like, swap those business licenses? Um, to, you know, like, truck goes to Well, so, licenses? yeah. I mean, those trucks can swap for their, if they're in that spot. But for the health department, you have to have a, a license for each truck for if it's in that county at all. So, yeah. Is there one location that seems to be the best? And that's what's good about a food truck, wherever there's people. Um, a lot of the food truck rallies that we've put together are some of the best events that we've done, something that we've just self promoted and, and done. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an operation now, so, yeah. Um, a lot of the process of this whole thing, is there one thing that you would say was a major downfall for you, or something if you go back and do it differently, you would? Uh, there's a lot that I think we'd do differently. Um, yeah, I think I think understanding our costs at first would be a number one thing. Then we wouldn't run into the problems with the Belgium mix that we got shipped in. I mean, we were I don't know what we were in eight months at that time, and we didn't know <laughs> what our costs were. We thought we did, but we didn't. So that's probably one of the number one things. Hiring the right people is good as well. So having the right people in place helps a lot. And that's that's hard to do. Yeah. So you mentioned the uh, competition. Is there some sort of 
camaraderie between food trucks, or do you guys just? Um, I don't. I don't know if there's necessarily a camaraderie between us and another waffle truck, but there is us with other food trucks. I've got a couple of friends, and that's something that has helped us um, gain traction. Is I think I think the very first food truck was put on in Davis County was put on by Waffle Wagon, Layla's Luau, and Winging It. There's th- three trucks that just came together. Um, yeah, and those those two guys are my buddies. So, and they've become friends over time. So. Yeah, there's definitely camaraderie. I go over to his house and we've watched a few games together and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of the food truck people they look out for each other. They're trying to help each other. I, I get phone calls of people that want it, us into an event, like, "Hey, we need one more truck here." So, when they have too many people, it, it's hard to serve so many people at, at a certain time. So, yeah. I was wondering, uh, so you're a comms major. Uh, yeah. What, what, what's your emphasis? Uh, PR and marketing. PR. So how does the how does your degree uh, fit in with your future plans? Because you talked about franchising and stuff like that, um, the more admin stuff. But I mean, what, what's your goal? Um, with the marketing, I mean, I'll just continue to market. There'll be different av- avenues of what we do, more paid advertising. Um, that kind of doesn't go against my PR side. Um, I have we have done a few placements in the newspaper, which has been pretty awesome to be on. I mean, we were on the front page of the Standard Examiner, and that was just kind of like. It was a cool moment, I guess. So, yeah, I I think I'll I'll kind of take over the communications or business relations with that. Hopefully, as it progresses. So, yeah. I went to the Lash Effect and I know you guys were. Is uh-huh. it like a catering? Like, how do they hire you to do that? Like, because you're not making money elsewhere. Yeah. So they what they've done is they've they've either paid like. They've paid for 100 waffles, and we come and we give those away, and then we can continue to sell to the public. That's that's some things are due, or or a lot of businesses have, has used us as a marketing tool to get a, I mean, get people in their parking lot that no other way that they've been in their parking lot is through food trucks. Do you ever so. do like a trade at that point? Because I I don't I don't think lashes would look good on me, but I think we could well, give I mean, a trade. Like, because you're getting business to them. Yeah. So um, not necessarily, because I mean it's kind of a you're scratching my back, I'll scratch yours type of deal. I mean, they've got people out there for their grand opening, and we're there to serve them. So, yeah. Did you have a question? Yeah. What was your favorite venue to work at? Um, uh, favorite venue to work at. Um, I I do enjoy the Fourth of July stuff because we're already there, like for the fireworks and stuff. I mean, after you're done, and that kind of feels good to be done with those events. I think those are probably some of my favorite events. Um, I mean, it's been cool, too, to work with my dad every day. So that's that's definitely been a positive some days. So he can get kind of ornery. <laughs> yeah. Is there any other questions? Yeah. Is there, like, etiquette or something that people should be following? <laughs> uh, I, I think they're probably pretty relaxed at a food truck. That's why I said I'm a little worried why they want me to come speak to you guys here. So I don't, I don't know if there's really an etiquette to, to a food truck rally. <laughs> it's on the street, so that's what's cool about it. So, is there anything else? Any other questions? Yeah. My dream job is to own a pawn shop. That's my dream, honestly. Yeah. No, I, I think I wanted to make the best waffle, and a lot of that drove that is competition. Um, I, I, I see myself as a competitive person, uh, and, and that's kind of what drove that, to become better at, at making waffles than, say, some competitors. I hope we do. I think we do. So. Yeah. Nothing. I'm ser- I'm serious. Yeah, that's why. Um, other than costs, I mean, but that was kind of an unforeseen thing. Honestly, I, I did I did the degree. One, first off, to make my wife happy. Second off, is something to fall back on to. Like if I have to go get it, if we fail at this, I've learned a lot, and I can go get a nine to five job somewhere. So that that's. I I don't know about an MBA. I'm sorry if there's professors here with that, but <laughs> honestly. Uh, and I've seen school is pointless since second grade, so I'm I'm just sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, how much would you say of your income is spent on advertising, and and how how does that compare to your 
Um, you know, income from advertising, well, it's been like every once in a while we'll do a few Facebook ads, but other than that, it's been pretty low. Um, I guess our, our truck is kind of hard to miss driving down the road. It's a 30 foot wagon. We're not trying to hide it. That's, that could be advertising. Those are those wraps can be fairly expensive. So that's that's about like the most on advertising. We plan to get on that in a little bit more as, as we get bigger. Um, then you can have a little bit more income to, to spend to allocate towards marketing and advertising. So. And it, when you have no money, it's hard to, to justify it So at first, so yeah. Yeah. Do you have any words of encouragement for people who want to get into this kind of stuff, like entrepreneurships and stuff? Um, words of encouragement. Uh, some of the, I, I think I've already talked about whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Uh, taking a jump and taking a leap. I mean, it, it's put a lot of stress on my wife, I'm sure. Um, she's had to... <laughs> I mean, it, it wasn't, it's not like it's a rock solid thing, you know, like, oh, I got a job here with a salary, they're going to pay me this, I got benefits, I got a uh, retirement. I don't have that. Um, but if you believe in yourself, I think you can go do it. I mean, that's, that's the number one thing is belief in yourself. And that can come over time and as the more you actually get into it. So. Is there any other questions? Yeah. Just one last one. Um, I don't know if you've thought about this before, but what would you value your business at? Um, Someone came up <coughs> on the street and said, I want to buy a walk of the wagon. What would you value that? <laughs> That's a, I mean, we'd have to go through more technical term is uh, uh, whatever the cost is for the month times whatever, some number. I, I look at it as a potential. I think the Waffle Wagon has great potential. Um, I think we can franchise it. Um, and with that, I, don't, I wouldn't sell it because of that potential, because I, I believe of what um, we've done over the last 18 months, 19 months, is, is something that I think we can, I'm, I'm excited and, and proud of, of so. I, I don't know what it's worth. <laughs> I haven't even really thought about it, so. Is there any other questions before we get some waffles? Yeah? Have you guys tried to get into pro or at all? To kind of piggyback off the waffle of success? Um, we're going that way. Yeah, we're going that way. Good piggyback. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going that way. I think there's just more people uh, and there's more, more traffic, so I think that we're going that way. So, yeah? i got a question kind of a bit like, uh, so when I told them, some people that I was coming to this today, they thought you guys were waffle love. Does that ever piss you off? Like if you know people you know, <laughs> think that you're. Like, I bet it makes them mad because they probably think, hey, these guys came after us. They're copying us, but they copied Baruches or whoever else, you know. But yeah. you know, honestly, so like you know, being confused with your competition is like, yeah, whatever. It's all waffles. Um. Yeah, I mean, does it make me mad? Not really. Do I think we have a better product? Yeah, but. I don't, I don't think it really makes me mad. I know it, it probably gets confusing, and I know that they get called Waffle Wagon all the time because it's probably an easier name than Waffle Love to remember because it's a wagon going down the road, you know? So um, they might not like us. I, I have nothing against what they do. They have a good product, and they market really well. So Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. Is there any other questions you guys have? All right, let's go get some waffles then.